Hello, everybody. Uh, hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. You're up early after a holiday. Must be torture. Oh, <laughs> yeah, if, if I would have taken an extra day if that was... <laughs> If well, let's, an option. We, if it's just the three of us, I guess we could do this very fast. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Well, yeah. Speaking of, yeah, you probably saw John is not able to join today. Yes. Um, but I do have like two agendas for each one of the different task force. If we want, we can go through them pretty quick. Yeah, great. Sure. So let me get to my screen sharing option. And hey, Niku, thanks for joining. Okay. Yeah. Hi, everybody else. Say hi. Okay, so this is my hyperledger screens there. Okay, are you seeing the hyperledger calendar meeting thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So um, let's start with the um, onboarding task force. So again, we've been asking the questions. Um, the first part of the task force, the first task we were going to accomplish was where exactly um, the people come on and what onboarding content should be there when they get there. So we started to analyze the uh, different places they come in. And I was hoping today we would be able to wrap that up with uh, Peter and John. Um, we'll see, I can send them an uh, email and see if they have anything, but they were doing the website. So when you hit the first two buttons on the website for use and learn, um, Peter was researching that and he was going to have his recommendations. Mm -hmm. uh, John did participate and he had his recommendations last week and he thought everything was like looking good. There was a one or two recommendations and I'll ask him to put them in the table when he gets a chance. Um, and then the next part was um, the wiki page would be the next place that you come um, and the start getting started button on the right. Um, and then the first thing in the getting started button um, was the uh, your presentation, David, uh -huh, which is probably a little out of date at this point, but which this was the agenda for. Yeah, I thought that the, it, it's great, but it's 10 minutes. And I thought maybe links in case somebody just wanted one of the four topics. Sure, sure. So actually, I'll write that in there. So like if you're just going to figure out how to do like this and you don't want to watch the whole 10 minute video, can I sure. get from from that? Um, getting involved page. So let me just write that in there real quick. Um, quick links, right? Okay. Um, and then the next was the frequently asked questions. And let's see if I can get that bigger. Open up for me. Yeah, and those are probably also fairly out of date, I would imagine. Can you see those better? Uh, it's a little small, but that's fine. I mean, I yeah. So there's a, like, a, in my opinion, there's like a lot of questions. Um, my only thought would be to maybe categorize them for what you know somebody might be asking about smart contracts, and there might be a couple questions in this list that are about that. You know what I mean? Like, so so, so you get to the frequently asked questions, and you can more whittle down to yeah, this. So yeah, categorizing is a good idea. Yeah, it's a lot to sort through. You're right. You know, so I was just going to say maybe, um, and again, since this project got accepted at the mentorship, these are things that I'm assuming the mentee is going to be working on. Um, so um, what was this one? Um, categories. I'm I think the other thing, I think the other thing there, um, Bobby, is just to uh, update them. They seem a bit out of date. Um, yeah. They talk about Jira. We don't use Jira anymore, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't. I mean, obviously, I didn't look at them all, but uh, it just feels like they're maybe potentially a bit out of date. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I don't think anybody's taken a real pass at it for a while. Yeah, that would be great. And then the Linux Foundation ID just brings you to the Linux Foundation sign up, which I think is great because then that's you know the first step. Um, so that's what I was looking at. Um, and I know there was a few other places, like I don't know if on the wiki page. You know, what else, if we want to, as the uh, task force slash mentee, mentee, mentorship jobs, do we want to tackle the layout of the wiki page to maybe <clears throat> make it more modern, more readable. I mean, this is a lot of information right when you hit your eyes. 
And I think it's too much information. No one's going to read all of these little things unless you're like, again, I'm not looking to go to a repository and do something. If I did, I would be going to that project page to look. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I agree. And I think that's totally within scope. I mean, we had talked about hoping, hoping that somebody with some UX skills gets that mentorship. Mm -hmm. Position. Yeah, so if they have thoughts, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if they want to say, hey, the UX of the wiki page should be whatever. You know, I still think this, all this stuff is important, but I don't think right here it's really readable. Yeah, I agree. And that speaks uh, to, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so I was saying that uh, this uh, data can be presented in a much uh, user-friendly manner. I think the work should be more, I guess, design-oriented for you. I think we need to improve this as well. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. And I know that Niku, last year, the mentorship program that you were involved in, correct me if I'm wrong, but there were, there was a lot of uh, UX work there and mock-ups and, and maybe there's some stuff we can, you know, borrow or repurpose from that or, or build on. So yeah, I think UX of any of these pages is certainly within scope. Yeah, yeah. I had made some mock-ups for the sites and as well as uh, I had added, uh, improved the start here website. I can just paste the demo over here, just, just a second. Yeah, this is, yeah. I and mean, if we could like maybe wireframe something up or do something like that, um, you know, have some options. I, I'm not sure where, where, what task that would be under, whether it would be something the task force would do or uh, the group itself. So yeah, or the mentee, well, yeah. call that the recent issues, right? So I'm gonna. And just for some historical stuff on there, that was always intended as just like a temporary thing, just to prove the concept of how do we embed content, you know, on the wiki that is maybe more dynamic. It was never intended to be like the final ultimate solution. But I thought it was the wiki right now is just very static. How do we bring some more relevant up to date stuff in it? Yeah, so I guess for wrapping up this week and until we actually get the mentee, um, we can just keep plugging away like this. Um, and if, um, uh, Niu, if you want to uh, jump on this task here, recent issues and get some recommendations for the group, that would be great for next week. I see you added Sorry, I didn't get you. Like Let's see what he added in the chat. Uh, sorry, I didn't get you. Uh I was volunteering you for uh, to analyze that part of the wiki page and come back with your recommendations next week. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. Thank you so much. And then I just clicked the link you put in the chat. So we're waiting for my very slow computer to load. <laughs> yeah. So actually, this was the my last year uh, work, and I had made some designs. Actually, I had a meet with uh, David, and he said that lots of design replicated, kind of like it was just a replication of the main hypology site. I think we can make use of some of those mockups from here. It's awesome. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, so I think the question is, where does this go? And this, I think, speaks to the analyzing the traffic flow. Yeah, some of these maybe are things we want to implement on the website. Some of them are maybe things we want to implement on the wiki. Some of them are maybe things for start here web website. So I think that yeah, this is great. Yeah, we definitely want to build on on this. Uh, just could you, could you just uh, go to the third, uh, the fourth one, the developers one, the section, yeah, this one. So this is a page uh, which I designed, like if a new contributor wants to contribute to some of the projects, he can just filter, he, he or she can just filter upon the projects and there will be a list of recent issues and I just present it in a better manner. Which I was saying right. that the wiki page needs to be in a better manner. Right? I think I have to log in first, I apologize. Let's see if that worked. Oh, no, no, I don't want to do this. All right, well, I don't have access to get in. Do you want to share your screen instead? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Is it visible? Yes, it's- um, Yeah, no. Uh-huh, yeah, I see. Just a second. So it was uh, this one, yeah. 
So I just created a, what I was talking about the wiki page, right? So here, uh, new com uh, here whenever a newcomer comes to site, yeah, he can just put, uh, click on those tags and just have a list of recent issues. He can just filter based upon the text tag which he needs. For example, there would be some issues that require Python, maybe based upon the projects he can filter. So this was just a better way to represent that. Uh, that wiki page which you were discussing about. So this is just yeah. a better way of representing that. I think that's great. And then correct me, so this wasn't implemented on start here yet. These these mockups would need to get built out. I just created a website for this. Uh, I deployed it as well. Uh, uh, live deployed link, yeah. But uh, I guess the code uh, is not that optimized. So it might take a lot of while for loading it. And, So it's taking too long. <laughs> it's the link in the. That's what I was telling about. Yeah, that's it. So sure. great. Yeah, well, I and mean, we don't have to solve this today, but yeah, this is a good example of how I think there are resources in the community. It's just a matter of how, helping people find find them, right? So that's great. That's it's, yeah. I think we can pull all this stuff together and have a workflow of how we want people to go from the website or the wiki or wherever and end up on these, you know, resources. Yeah. Great. 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 Okay. Thanks. And that leads to one bit of feedback I had. Bobby, on your chart, maybe just one thing to consider adding. Uh huh. I'm listening. Uh, um, Share my screen again. And again, we don't have to fill it out right now, but maybe some columns to add to it is maybe we want this would like speak to like the impact that these changes have. We may want to like look at the metrics today to have a baseline of how many people are seeing a given resource, like the Start Here website, and then after we make these UX changes, see if there's been an increase in traffic, because if we want to improve the workflow and get people to these resources, it'd be nice to see, you know, a change. So we can have a column that says, like, what is the traffic on these different resources, like the FAQ page or whatever it may be. And then if we want to have more people see it, you know, what is the traffic after we make those workflow UX changes? Yep, that sounds great. Be a nice way for the mentee to see that they've done something tangible, right? Like before I started doing the work, it was this. After I did the work, it was that. That would be awesome. So again, and then it's just, um, I guess the mentee ship, when do they decide? When, it's like another month, right? Or three weeks? I don't remember the exact date. I may, I want to say May 10, I may be wrong, but yeah, it's a few more weeks. People have a while to apply. So I think now's the time if, if you know anybody who's interested in, yeah, now's the time to apply. Yeah, and I think for the task force, getting our um, ducks in a row so that when the mentor comes, we have specific things instead of, oh, we want to work on this or we want to work on like, A really hundred, but yeah, things. yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah we wouldn't want the person to sit around and like, okay, now what do I do? Exactly. So that would be good because this is forming into a nice list for that. Um, so before we move to documentation, does anybody have anything for onboarding? Okay, and I put all those links in there. This is gorgeous. I really like this. This is really nice. Yeah, um, it's nice to have. I'm, I'm gonna go look at that all afternoon. I should <laughs> play with that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so that we'll move on to the documentation task force. And of course, my computer's slow to load. So, um. The last time we were talking about um, the different, um, how the mentorships are all tied together and how like initially we thought maybe we could group them together, but they're all separate and how now we're focusing on trying to get the mentee because this program got uh, accepted too, um, how to get the mentee to be able to share um, what the documentation task force is developing with these mentees that need it. Did I get that right, David? 
so ask the question again. Maybe I didn't. So I think that, that what we should be focusing on now, now that we got accepted and that we're getting a mentee, um, instead of trying to combine documentation, um, menteeships and all that other stuff, is that the documentation candidate for the mentee needs to work on getting these projects that also got accepted in the mentorship program, the templates and the hyperledger way to them before they start developing their documentation off of what they're working on. Yeah, to collaborate. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So exactly. some of them, yes. So we we want the mentee for the documentation to possibly do a very early in the program presentation to all the mentees on these programs here. Um these are all the programs that um, were pending. I think they all got accepted. I'd have to double check, but um, I think all of them did get accepted. Um, and these are all working on documentation and they're all gonna be looking for some guidance from Hyperledger Foundation. So if the mentee can be the person giving them that guide, or maybe just the task force does it, I'm not sure if the mentee would be ready for that. Exactly, that yeah. That would be my concern. I wouldn't want to hold anybody up. So maybe it's more iterative. I mean, people, I think it's gonna be kind of an ongoing dialogue with the task force and these groups. And we'll see what these groups do and we'll take what they're doing and try to, <clears throat> if it's a good idea, just trying to spread it more widely. <laughs> Excuse me. So yeah, I don't think, I just wanted to put something else in here that I just thought of. Um, so the task force will need uh, reach out to the mentors. Yeah, I think both, yeah, I, yeah, ideally at, both. Um, at a Right? So we would, oh, that's the wrong. Um, task force will need to reach out to the mentors that have mentee and have their mentees show up at a meeting for documentation in the beginning that the task force will do. Yeah, hopefully there's an ongoing dialogue for the, all the mentors and mentees involved in a documentation project. Hopefully there's an ongoing dialogue between them and the documentation task force. and. The documentation task force can support what they're doing they can report back what they're doing and then we can kind of package up at the end of all these projects like here here are things that works well here's what we recommend here are resources okay so again um what I thought the uh, deliver the, the, co the common goal of the documentation task force is to um, not again, I think I wrote it up here. Um, not try, try to find out what documentation needs to be created because there should be some community guidelines for how to document things or, how, you know, just regular um, information for community members. Um, is that created already? Does it need to be, like we said, updated as soon as we hit a web page? It was like, oh, that's out of date. Like, what is, and how is that system in place to do that in the future? You know, like, when do we have any kind of um, way to, um, for outdated stuff to let us know it's outdated? Or do, you know, how do we, you know, like, I don't want to hit a video and have it be four years old. On the web, <laughs> you know, yeah. the technology is not there anymore. Most of it, there has changed so much. It looks so much different. Um, so that's some of the questions. And again, I'm trying to get in, in, in my, this one is hard for me to scope out. Like onboarding is easy because you have certain landing points and it's very like, you know, you can pinpoint the task. Documentation, it's all over the place. Every There's so much documentation in the community and I'm trying to figure out what the focus is. And I know one of the focuses is to get, um, that uh, common user guide and, the, and that GitHub repository from the other lab, um, you know, working and uh, alive again and have some people look at it and pay attention to it, you know, so that uh, this looks, you know, is perfect and everybody. We may have missed, your audio may have gone out. I think out. you are on mute actually. 
We can't hear you. Bubba, I don't know if you're hearing us. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, now we hear you. Oh, okay. Sorry yeah, yeah. about that. So I was just saying that, that um, you know, there's going to be several different deliverables from the documentation task force. And I'm having a little trouble getting my head around, like writing them out, like one, two, three, four. So I know, again, we're doing the common guide, um, the common practices and user guides for the GitHub repositories to the README documents. That's definitely one of the deliverables. Another one, um, I guess, is would you consider documentation, David, creating those uh, PowerPoints for like when we said get started or is that marketing? Yeah, I mean, I guess there's some gray area around some of the stuff, but, and I think for the documentation stuff, I have less of a, you know, a, an opinion than I do about the onboarding stuff. I mean, my thought on the documentation is it's really more the maintainers to tell us what resources are needed, right? So maybe that's a good discussion to have with the TOC the next time you present to them. Like what, if you're saying you're having a little bit of a, a uncertainty around the deliverables. I mean, ideally that comes from the maintainers, like, hey, it would be helpful to have, you know, these three things or whatever it may be, right? Uh -huh. I get it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I, I was saying that from what I've understood is that, do we need to come up with the proper template of what the documentation should be looking like? Is that what you're discussing? Um, well, I think it's it's what the, we're making suggestions to take your GitHub repository and the README docs and how to do that, as well as um, making suggestions for what documentation each project should have, and that's going to fall into more of the best practices badges. But it's still going to be like in the best practices, there's a documentation piece that um, will say like each project should have this, this, and this. and I think that the documentation task force should determine what those points are and make those suggestions to the um, a badging uh, task force. And Tracy might be able to jump in on that one and tell me if that's the right uh, synergy between those two groups. Yeah, and I, I think just to add to that, Niku, so we did create a documentation uh -huh. template lab um, that basically is a starting point for people to create and start their documents. Um, I think the the other piece of the documentation task force is really around, um, you know, what are the best practices? So, right, the template is is kind of, I would say, like it's there, but I don't know that it's correct if it's got everything in it that it should, if there's things that we could add to that to make it better. Um, and then I, I think that, yeah, Bobby, I, I don't know what the, the right synergies are with the best, best practices and the badging. Um, it, it feels like we're um, still trying to figure out exactly how all of these things are gonna fit together. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, I would say, you know, let's, let's give as much guidance as we can for people who are looking to create documentation on what should be in there um you know and you know where people are going to end up looking for that information i think right now with the documentation there's inconsistencies across our projects and those inconsistencies assuming that you're working on more than one project can tend to be an issue Right, where some people have their contribution information under a developer section, right, versus maybe that developer section and other projects is for users of the project and not contributors to the project. Um, and I think, you know, if we can just set up some guidelines and some best practices around where we, what kind of information is needed and where that information should end up, I think that would help a lot. Yeah, agreed. Okay, so we're forming um, around the deliverables, which is good. So I think I present all this. Actually, I don't think I know I present all this Thursday at the TOC meeting. So I'll start working on um, getting some points out to them and again, requesting 
you know, maybe some guidance from them as to what the anticipatory deliverables are for that task force. Yeah, I think that's I think that's good, Bobby. I think if we can get some guidance from other people on what they're expecting beyond and above what's been done with the template, right? I think that'll help. Yeah, so this is what we have. We we have a mentee, we want to move forward, you know, what are your needs? Yep. We can get more information that way. Okay. Um, anybody have anything else? I don't have anything else right now. Everybody good? Okay. Then Great. I will do um, some kind of summary of this for the TOC meeting, and we'll talk again on Monday. Sounds good. Uh, hello. Uh, just one thing. Just one thing. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no worries. So regarding this project, uh, which is uh, based on like, uh, the onboarding mentor and mentee program, so is it just going to be documentation oriented or is it going to be kind of like UI UX or maybe some kind of development as well? Because the uh, requirements is mentioned uh, quite a good number of skills like JavaScript, Colang and other stuffs. Well, there's two separate mentorship programs, one for documentation and one for onboarding. So I think the onboarding more needs the UX design, uh, definitely needs it. Suggestions on the website, suggestions on the wiki page, um, so that's more where the onboarding comes in. And let me just put a link. I have them both right here. Here is the what's this name? onboarding. Um, let me just make sure. Of course, I'm waiting for it to leave. Yeah, here's the onboarding link. And that describes what's expected from the, uh, what a rutley it's considered a rough draft of what the um, actual day-to-day uh, -day steps are in the mentors um, project, but this is what was accepted at the initial start. So it can be edited and it can be um, manipulated to have, again, if you don't have a strong UX designer, it's not really going to focus on UX, but that would be great if there's a UX designer. Um, so yes, absolutely. Whereas the documentation test Sorry. And I don't mean to interrupt, but I do need to drop in, in a minute. I'm going to make you host, Bobby, so you can. Oh, no, I'm, I'm just putting this last link in, and I think we're all finished. There's the mentor for the documentation, and you can, like, through that, see the difference between what um, each one is asking for, if that helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Thank you. Yeah. And good. then Thanks, we'll look so. forward to your presentation next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll be there. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good week. Yeah, see you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.